Rise, Meg. The Force will be with you. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having an amazing day. In today's news update, we have some really exciting details to do with the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. We're also going to be talking about how Grogu could be the Mandalorian in Season 3. And we're also going to be doing some speculating to do with the Ahsoka Tano series. Before I dive on into the news, please may I ask you to hit like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a huge welcome if you are, and please be sure to hit the notification bell to be alerted each and every time I post new content to the channel. You can expect daily Star Wars updates from me. Now without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into it. So let's talk about the Kenobi series and specifically the character of Qui-Gon Jinn who was portrayed by the brilliant Liam Neeson in The Phantom Menace. So this blew up on Reddit yesterday and I want to talk about it now. Liam Neeson would like to be in the Obi-Wan Disney Plus series, so someone make this happen. Big things are happening in the Star Wars universe. Lucasfilm's confirmation of 10 new Star Wars projects at Disney Investor Day has opened the floodgates for this sci-fi franchise. All bets are off and anything can happen. This is especially true for the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus series, which stars Ewan McGregor and will feature the return of Star Wars alum Hayden Christensen as Darth Vader. With the Obi-Wan show gearing up to be a major prequel trilogy reunion, could Star Wars fans hope to see more familiar faces on one of this first new Star Wars Disney Plus shows? Collider had the opportunity to answer this question when Stephen Waitrobb sat down for a video chat with Liam Neeson to discuss his upcoming movie, The Marksman. At the end of the interview, they turned the conversation towards Neeson's role as Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn in The Phantom Menace. When asked if he was aware just how frequently fans clamour for Neeson to return as Qui-Gon, the actor replied, I'll be honest with you, I haven't heard that at all. Of course, they had to reassure Neeson that fans were definitely down for Qui-Gon to come back. Neeson was somewhat surprised and asked if Star Wars started to fade away from the cinema landscape, to which they replied that it is not. After informing him about the big plans for the upcoming Star Wars movies and TV shows, they asked him whether he'd be game to play in a flashback in the Kenobi series as Qui-Gon. At the point, a smile spread across Neeson's face and he answered, sure, I'd be up for that, yes. So now it seems like the ball is officially in McGregor's court, or perhaps it's in Kathleen Kennedy's court. Either way, we officially submit our request to Neeson to appear as Qui-Gon Jinn in the Obi-Wan Kenobi show because it needs to happen. So in yesterday's video, I talked about characters that we will see or we can expect to see in the upcoming Kenobi series. And I did state we need to hear Qui-Gon's voice instructing Obi-Wan of how to become a force ghost. After all, as Yoda told him in Revenge of the Sith, before they both went into exile, he would need to undergo this training on Tatooine while Yoda was on Dagobah. I think I speak for all prequels fans when I say, of course, we would love to see Qui-Gon Jinn return, even if it is just as a Force voice, or even to flashbacks before the Battle of Naboo in Episode 1, where we do see Qui-Gon in the flesh. Now, I am aware that not all of my audience likes the prequels or loves the prequels as much as I do, but let me know what you think of this down below. Do you want to see Qui-Gon Jinn in the Kenobi series? Yes or no and why? So without much further ado, let's move on to our next article. This is from Inverse and they write, The Mandalorian Season 3 Monsters could set up a Star Wars Avengers moment. In the Star Wars universe, conflicts have always pitted light against dark, typically the Jedi vs Sith. What the Star Wars universe needs now is an outside force, beyond the intergalactic struggles we've seen so far. This fan theory provides just that. One Redditor suggests that the future of the Star Wars television universe lies in a strange species first mentioned in Timothy Zahn's canon novel, Thrawn Alliances. In the novel, Chiss Empire officer and art lover Grand Admiral Thrawn warns Vader of an incoming threat by the Grisk, a mysterious race from the unknown regions who have been surveying the universe since the Clone Wars. And by the way, I said Grisk, I've heard people say Grisk, Grisk, you know, you pronounce it however you want. The Star Wars television universe is primed to introduce this species to screens everywhere. With multiple series being developed concurrently, the temptation for characters like Boba Fett, Din and Ahsoka to cross paths again seems too alluring to resist. 
Thrawn, the only character who canonically knows about the Grisk, was last seen in the Rebels finale drifting into the unknown regions with Ezra Bridger. Ahsoka is searching for both, and Thrawn's knowledge could serve useful in the upcoming conflict. The Mandalorian Season 3 would be the perfect time to introduce this threat. Lucasfilm's flagship live-action Star Wars show could establish the conflict, and Ahsoka's search for Thrawn and Ezra in her spin-off show could flesh out the need for a larger army. The next logical step, a massive series spanning team up. This theory suggests that the team up will be larger than we've seen in the past from the Mandalorian and will eventually lead to Thrawn and his fellow Chiss defending the galaxy. That means sworn enemies Thrawn and Ahsoka will have to put aside their differences to help each other. The Grisk are gruesome species who replace their teeth with implants that can be used as both weapons and communicators. The most terrifying tactic is how they recruit reinforcements. They enter an individual's mind and manipulate their darkest fears to transform them into a client species. According to the novel, the Chiss believed it only took three Grisk to take over a nation and a hundred to take over an entire planet. So I want to know what you guys think. Do you think it would be a good idea to introduce these species so that our heroes and the big bad could reunite together and put aside their differences to fight a larger threat? I don't know about The Mandalorian Season 3, but I think it would be a good idea for the Ahsoka Tano series. And so finally, we're going to take a look at an article which states why Grogu is actually the title character, The Mandalorian. This is an idea I've spoken about in depth in previous videos, but there is now a news article which states the same thing. So let's take a look now. During the season 1 finale of The Mandalorian, the best scar clad bounty hunter's real name was revealed by Moff Gideon, and he was a foundling adopted into the creed of the Mandalorian people as a child. Mandalorians have a cultural practice of adopting foundlings, and they don't have a prejudice against adoption versus blood connections. At the end of season 1 as well, Din Djarin took on a mission to return Grogu to his own kind. At the end of season 2, Grogu leaves Din to continue his Jedi training with Luke Skywalker, thus completing Din Djarin's mission to return Grogu to his own kind, but it does nothing to eliminate the familial-like bond that has developed between Din Djarin and Grogu. Din was part of a specific Mandalorian clan called the Tribe, which has a creed that is not shared by other clans. This includes an oath to never remove the helmet, and they have a commitment to protecting and fostering foundlings. Being a foundling himself, Grogu becomes a Mandalorian, and this complicates the assumption that Din is the solo titular character of the series. This could lead to several different paths the show may take now that Din's mission with Grogu seems to be wrapped up. The show could continue to follow Din as he is now the owner of the Darksaber, which makes him the true leader of Mandalore. However, the Mandalorian could shift and follow Grogu as he trains with Luke. The show could also follow both their journey simultaneously. If the Mandalorian does the latter, it may lead to Grogu outliving Din, depending on how much time passes. Grogu is the same species as Yoda, who was 900 when he died. So if Din dies of old age, Grogu would outlive him, becoming the sole Mandalorian in regards to the show. Grogu choosing the path of a Mandalorian may explain why there is no mention of Grogu during the sequels. He may have chosen the way of Mandalore instead of the way of the Jedi. Now, I'm certainly in favour of Grogu becoming a Mandalorian or even a Mandalorian Jedi, but I don't think it will be when Din dies. I believe that it's going to happen probably in Season 3, and I think Grogu is going to refuse his Jedi training to rejoin Din Djarin, and then the two will continue their adventures. I just don't see how they could leave Grogu and Mando separated for so long, and I do think they'll be back together before we know it. But let me know what you guys think of this in the comments down below. So that is all of the news I have for you guys today. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and also please consider going over to my Patreon page to become a patron. For just 2 or $10 a month, you get exclusive access to content that is not found here on this platform. I'm Star Wars Meg wishing you a phenomenal rest of the day, no matter where you dwell in the galaxy. Have a good one.